Facebook just to make sure. So we're live now. Let's we'll make sure that it's working on Facebook here. And I'm sure it is. There we go. Yeah, okay, we are live. Let me turn this down. Oops. So any questions pop up, you're good to go. Cool. Can I turn it on on Facebook as well so I can see questions? Yeah, if anyone's are there, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, all I do is I turn the phone on mute and you know, if anyone pops any questions, we can do it absolutely there. So yeah, feel free. And I like it, I'm loving the hat. That's like that old school script hat. Yep, I had, had these in college. <laughs> oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, this one I just got made, but I mean, I had the old school script in college. Cool. All right. Just, yeah. Let me know. Right, let me know when you're all set. On the, we'll, yep. I got right. it. Welcome. Good evening. Good afternoon. Depending on where you are, it's lunchtime for some of you. Uh, it's Jason, aka Bubba on Baseball here, and I'm bringing you this today's episode of Meet the Artist for the Negro League marketplace baseball marketplace i was told i was telling it was wrong art uh and we have the card competition here and we've got david garcia of garcia Studios. david welcome to the show thank you jason happy to be here thank you so uh, before we started we were talking about the big game here so if you hear any loud noises in there that means scotland has scored if you hear any groans that means england has scored so i'm, I'm gonna try not to look at my phone to, during this to see what's going on uh I, so funny enough in the studio i have a tv in front of me and i was really debating if i put the put that on uh, i was like I, I couldn't do it i'd be way too distracted to uh watch the game there but uh i'm hoping that scotland wins this one and uh I'll maybe i'll see something here so um first off david uh, tell us a bit about yourself uh where are you from and what's your day job uh, my day job, I work for a big uh, media company. I've been there uh, in my 14th year. And I'm an ad uh, business systems analyst, I guess you'd say. Or we do all the administrative stuff for all the web. Right. So we're, we were talk actually talking about advertising before. So I'm the one that helps all the users get the ads onto the web as far as the... <laughs> so <laughs> in a day with all the ads on the web. Um, but my hobby and my passion, of course, is is designing. Um, I'm not a classically trained designer, but it's something I started maybe in the late 90s. And then uh, it wasn't until three years ago that I started designing my own baseball cards. One of my philosophies has always been, uh, I was just telling my friends the other day, you know, wh why can't I do that? So I started producing music in the 90s and I thought, well, why can't I do, why can't I produce my own music? So I taught myself and do my own music. Got in photography. I used to take uh, buy the big posters of the whales or Canada or the, you know the big scenic things. So then I started traveling and I make my own big posters. Why can't I do that? So three years ago, I was at spring training here in Florida, and I was taking pictures of the players. And I thought, you know what? Why can't I make my own baseball cards? And that's why can't I do that? So that's why that's how I got started three years ago. Music was kind of dying down, um, and I just said, why can't I do that? And it's taken me three years to kind of get where I'm at to, to actually selling them now. Um, so it's been a big big learning experience. So what type of music were you playing uh, or producing, or was that? Uh, it was kind of, it was hip hop, like acid jazz. Since mm -hmm. I grew up in the 80s and 90s, I grew up when hip hop started. So when I was in college in, in the late 80s and early 90s, I was a hip hop DJ. We had a club at Marquette University where I went. Um, I had a radio show. And then I started, yeah, pr producing my own music. And I did that for quite a few years. Did a lot of sampling. And I have, still have my old records. Um, but then that, yeah, everybody started pr producing music. And I wanted to get back into the sports, I guess, a little bit more. Fair enough. Like I said, uh, there's nothing like having a good college radio show as well. I had one as myself, and I always said, no, no one's ever listening to you. And then every once in a while, yeah. someone goes, oh, I like your show. I was like, really? You listened to That's fantastic. <laughs> oh, uh, So let's talk about your hard art then. So how did you get started? So obviously you were at spring training in Florida here, and you uh, were taking photos. Uh, who is the, the player that maybe inspired you to go, all right, yeah, I'm taking some good photos, or was it a, a particular game? Uh, being a Cardinals fan, they play like an hour and 20 minutes north of where I live in Jupiter, Florida. 
and I was a huge Albert Pujols fan. So I would always go and take pictures of, of him when he played the Cardinals quite a few years ago. Uh, and then more recently, it's probably when it, it was three years ago, probably when Acuna first came up in the Braves. And I, we would go to the Astros moved to uh, this before they cheated to West Palm. They, they share a ballpark with the Nationals. So I would see like the, the Braves play the Astros and get a bunch of pictures of uh, Correa and Altuve and the Acuna was, you know, just coming up and Ozzy Albies. So I think it was probably Acuna that probably got me, gosh, this guy's going to be, you know, I think he's going to be something special. I need to try to make cards of him or, or the Astros. I loved Correa. Um, now, after they cheated, I'm a little bit less of, <laughs> follow the Astros a little bit less, but um, like you, I'm a huge fan. I have a whole, that closet back there is full of jerseys, mm -hmm. uh, soccer, or football, as you call it there. Sorry, yeah, I said. <laughs> um, American football, baseball, basketball. Um, so yeah, I've, I've always been, a, my parents had me wearing jerseys and stuff when I was in grade school. So I've always been in the sports. That's it. So, so my, my co-host is watching the show and watching the Scotland match, and he wants to know, uh, what was it? John's asked a question and said, are you a fan of Nas? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Big fan of Nas. He was huge when I was, when I was in college when that album came out. Pete Rock, uh, my favorite producers are, if you know, DJ Premier and Pete Rock were two of my biggest inspirations when I started producing. Um, I saw the Pete Rock poster on the wall. Um, but yeah, the producers, were, I was more so much in the, the, the hip hop production. Um, but yeah, definitely know who Nas is. <laughs> yeah. John Maddox is one of the best. favorite album. Uh, yeah, Illmatic is one of the best, best ever. And he had Pete uh, Rock, Lard Professor, DJ Premier, all-star lineup of producers it was just, it was kind of like a lightning in the bottle for that that album absolutely yeah it is one of the greatest albums out there, out there and it was such a golden era of rap at that time as well too yeah i don't know what's happened to it now but people say would you ever would you ever want to be younger or older i said you know what i'm 50 years old now and i grew up when hip-hop started so break dancing and all the i'm just so happy that i was a part of that movement when it began and, and, I mean, because I said, these were the influencers and there's been another generation and now as we're looking at the next generation and you're seeing such a crossover of music these days uh, uh, where I felt like, you know, they really heavily sampled from the 70s albums and, and drew like that. And that beat was just, you know, amazing. Yeah, it was, it was much more about sampling back then. I mean, I used to go to record stores every week looking for, especially jazz. I'm a big jazz fan. So that uh, jazz samples and everything like that. Um, I still have my music up on my uh, SoundCloud page. I just haven't produced any in quite a few years, but um, my full-time job takes up a lot of my time. So weekends is all I get to design. So I don't have time to do the design. <laughs> so, so you're not going to, so what we should expect soon is a DJ ski type card where you produce <laughs> it for your card and you can go send it to Spotify. We can hear what, the, what was the inspiration for that. Yeah. I was, I'm impressed with what, what he's doing, taking things to the next level. Um, I'll be honest, I haven't been impressed overall with Project 70 compared to, uh, there's so many, you're seeing the artists that are, that are coming out for this Josh Gibson campaign. Mm -hmm. I mean, like Jose Tellier, um, just today, I pulled it up. I'm like, so glad I'm after uh, Jamie Thomas. <laughs> I'm before Jamie Thomas, I mean, because his, his work, I mean, look at the card he just put out. I'm looking in here on Twitter. I was like, whoa. There's some, I mean, there's some heavy hitters. I'm just an amateur compared to these guys are some real, and women are some real heavy hitters. I, I absolutely. Um, uh, heavy J had convinced me that I needed to do a card and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to back out after I saw Todd Radom did a card. And I was like, you, you can't have the Todd father come do a card. <laughs> and uh, hey, like everyone else has just come up with these amazing ideas there. And they, they it's really inspirational to see what people have done and how creative they've been with it. Um, I'm blown away. Um, I, I've, I've had a couple artists, you know, text me and go, have you seen the card today? It's outrageous. Yeah. I put my, I put my alerts on I, I suggest anyone put your alerts on Twitter for the, the NL, NLB March <laughs> art. Yeah. Yeah. March, uh, Twitter. So that way you're, you're notified whenever the new one comes out at 12 and three. Um, that way I'm always in the loop and I can, I can like and retweet. But like I said, these, these guys are, are going, and women, sorry, are going next, 
next level, next level. I mean, when Josh Trout and the, there's some big, big names in there. Um, I was worried for my card to come out. I'm glad it already did. I'll pull it up here. Hold on. I'm going to go and share the screen here because I do have your card here. Uh, um, just... It got a good reception. Um, and I'm so happy my wife convinced me to, to buy my own last version. I have number 10 of 10 or else I wouldn't have had my own card. <laughs> <laughs> right. And here's your card here. Yep. Cool. So let's talk about your card then. I said, where okay. did you get your inspiration for it? Uh, and your design a bit. Let's, let's talk about it. Walk us through it. Yeah. The funny thing is that I actually um, started designing the car before uh, this, the tournament and every, anything came about. Um, I was a big fan of triple play design with Eric uh, Killeberger. Mm -hmm. And I had bought one of his cards and then it, it kind of inspired me to do this. And he's like, have you ever talked to Tad? And I was like, no. He's like, well, you need to go here and go do this and talk to Tad. And this is all before this even started. So I started designing this card uh, a month before this, this competition became a, a, an effect. Um, but my goal was, so I added the MLB MVP award, you know, after the competition started, but I was, I'm a big fan. I'm, I'm a big, as we, we were talking about before the call, I'm all about diversity and inclusion and equality, acceptance. So I wanted to do something with a bunch of color on it and then try to bring the focus back to Josh in the middle. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how I, I, I had a lot of gradients and, and filters and things to get all those clutter, colors going, especially since it was a black and white photo. So that was the, my main goal was lots of diversity and then bring the attention back to Josh. And then when the, MVP award came, I said, I want to speak this into existence. I want to speak the MLB MVP award. I want to put it on the card like it's already happened. So that's why I put it big and bold on the top. He is going to be named the MLP MVP award after we're named after Josh Gibson. So that's kind of where, how this all came about. I want his name big so people see it. Um, I guess that, that's where I was going with it, if that makes sense. No, absolutely. Um, I, I'm really enjoying, like I said, it said a lot of people, it said it really helps to talk about the card and where the inspiration was and how they do it. Because it's, it's now, like I said, it's, it's a competition now. It's no longer, okay, I produced yeah. the card here. It's like, there's actually some thought behind it. It said, you know, so it's really interesting to hear that he's like, all right, well, I know I'm working with the black and white photo, but how can I make it pop and work with the colors behind it there? Yeah, and I think um, a lot of times I start with a photo and then I get inspired you know, with whatever picture I have, and then I kind of go from there. So the black and white is okay. I, yeah, I need to add some pop. I need to add some diversity here, some some color to bring this thing to life. Cool. And so the font, I really enjoy the font. What font is that that you use? You not you probably don't know off the top of your head there, but it's, it's yeah. a cool looking font. I have to, I'll have to open Photoshop to you and open. Ah, it's yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I've literally spent three years trying trying to learn. Um, cause I, I hadn't been designing for quite a while, mm -hmm. trying to learn fonts. I watched tons of YouTube videos, uh, tons of sports designers. And it took me a long time to find my, my niche. I've been on, on Instagram for three years and it, up until last year, I think I had like 300 and something followers. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't until I found this card art community that I never knew existed, that I kind of found my niche. And I said, you know, Told my wife turning 50 years old, I'm like, God, this is like the, the best thing that ever happened. That I that there's this community out there. And a lot of them grew up the way I did. They like they love hip hop. Um, they're all about you know the uh the movement. Um and 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 like Tad like Tad says, this is big, this is so much bigger than baseball. I love that when he he quoted that or or hashtagged it. Mm -hmm. The whole movement of of Josh Gibson and and diversity and inclusion of what, what we survived the past four years in America, it's just, it's, it's really a bigger, it's so much bigger than, than what we're doing as artists here. So I, that's important, especially on Juneteenth day that we're celebrating today, which just became a federal holiday. Um, it's important to know where we were, especially back then. Um, and if you read about Josh, then you understand a little bit more of, of, of the history of baseball and the history of America too. So it's, I had to go look some stuff up to learn his story. So I think it's important. That's why I wanted his name big. Who is Josh Gibson? Let me go Google that and, and try to learn. So 
So, uh, so we've got some UK audience listeners here. So do you want to explain what Juneteenth Day is? Because they won't know what that is there. That's, that's definitely not something you hear on this side of the pond. Yes, I actually posted on my, my Twitter page today. What is Juneteenth? So it's Juneteenth is the oldest national celebrated commemorative of the ending of slavery in the United States. So it was on June 19th, 1865, that soldiers, soldiers landed in Galveston, Texas, with the news that the Civil War had ended it and the slaves were now free. So it was two and a half years after Lincoln did the Emancipation Proclamation. So think about how crazy that is. They were freed two and a half years before. And this is when they found out in Texas that two and a half years later that they were free. So this is this is part of the day celebrating it. And when I lived in Milwaukee when I was in college, they actually had Juneteenth Day and I didn't know what it was back then. So again, I encourage people to go to Google this, Google Josh Gibson. There's so much of our history in the United States, as maybe you remember, that you're not taught in school that you have to kind of learn on your own. So um, that's one of the great things about Google. You can, <laughs> and YouTube, you can, you can go learn yourself. So you know, there, everything's at your fingertips. I mean, uh, we would say this quite a bit with John. Uh, he literally learned about the Negro Leagues by playing video games in 2001. <laughs> and he, had, he had unlocked uh, Buck Leonard play, and, and Buck Leonard gave a little speech and you know whatever a version of a baseball player was laying. He's like, I had no idea this even existed. Uh, saying that, John had only been playing the games for like two years and didn't know much about MLB anyways. But it's always interesting to hear how people learn about the Negro Leagues and learn more of their stories. Because again, it's only recently, say the last 20 years, it's really become more prominent. Um, you know, I, I remember watching Ken Burns' documentary and that was the first time I had heard about the Negro Leagues. That was a great documentary. And I think it's amazing that what's happening now during this, this card event or this movement for the Josh Gibson MVP award, where we just, we just literally had last week, the um, major league baseball accept the Negro leagues into the, the saber, you know, the, the stats. And here we have Juneteenth literally being approved yesterday for a federal. I mean, there's just, it's a big, bigger than baseball. I keep saying that bigger than baseball that's going on here. Um, so it's, it's, it's exciting in that regard to, to be here in the States. Absolutely. It's like I said, progress has been needed and things move slow. And it's, it's nice to see things are moving up a little bit faster here. Yeah, it took a long time. But I guess the four years of uh, madness. <laughs> let's we'll forget those four years. They didn't really happen. <laughs> well, out of, out of the bad often comes good. So yeah, these are yeah. some good things that are that maybe have been come to the forefront um, out of the madness. Uh, maybe we, we wouldn't have talked about things as much. Um, so you never know. I, I think you're absolutely right. It, it definitely opens more of a conversation. You know, I think people are definitely more aware of that. Um, you know, not only of the conversation you see from the media, but you have social media like that. I think it opens a lot more people's eyes that they previously didn't notice before. Yeah, and I, I think again I'll keep going back to Tad's bigger than baseball it's it's important to learn more than just you know idolize different players um whenever i do a design i actually try to learn for example i did a manny bunch of manny machado stuff last year he was born in uh he's from miami lives where my wife uh his family lives in hialeah I, I learned this whole story and i do research about um the players there's a chuck d card you might want to talk, go to up there yeah, okay we'll talk about chuck d so there you go there's a custom card did actually trying to recreate the top versions it's a lot harder than i thought <laughs> really oh yeah i mean for someone that's not classically trained in in design trying to recreate these cards with every little curve and and shadow and effect and takes it was a lot harder than i thought doing that 73 84 86 tops um but chuck d i'm a huge public enemy fan from back in the day i had the first cassette back when it came out um but i like how this one came out because i'm still still a big fan of chuck d and he's a big baseball card guy too yeah he actually he's actually uh an artist yes <laughs> yeah I, I didn't realize that until about last year and 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 it was like oh that's really cool i've I never I guessed chuck d was a, a baseball card guy yeah, and an artist, um, but he's still still relevant. I love people that have. I've always liked to have people that had a message in the music. Mm -hmm. It don't just you know, whatever comes off the top of their head. Uh, they they're actually 
giving us a message when we learn. When Chuck D rhymes, you learn something. Do you find that with, I say, uh, not to dwell on music, but you find that it's, that's lacking in the music that comes out these days, where it is previously, I, I had this conversation quite a bit with a friend that's a musician, and he said the shift is, he went through the whole iTunes era, and he said they were getting their band set up, and you used to make an album and hope you had maybe two or three songs that were hits, where now with everyone on iTunes, like your album can suck, but if you have, all you have to have is one song and to be popular, and that's it. And sometimes maybe five or 15 seconds that are good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just so you can loop it on your TikTok or whatever you're. <laughs> yeah. I, I think the really cool thing is, too, is that I have nieces and nephews that are now in their teens or 20s in college, and they're, they have albums and records. So it's so cool to see or shell, top, shell toe Adidas. Everything that we had as kids, you know, comes around. Mm -hmm. Uh, I heard album sales were going up during COVID. People were buying more albums, um, records, people know vinyl. Yeah, you, you, so you taught them well. You taught them how to crate dig. Yeah, well, I, they, they kind of learned on their own because they live a little bit farther away, but I, I'm impressed. So I, I buy them records now for, for their birthdays and so, so forth. But oh, That's really cool. Yeah. yeah I would, I even when I did my music, I tried to have, I, I would sample from different speeches. Um, I always like to have a message. Uh, so yeah, but behind each card I do, I try to, I try to learn about the players, their history, where they come from. My dad's from Puerto Rico, so I grew up with. He was a huge Clemente fan growing up. Um, you see, you play MLB the show as well. <laughs> I do. That's a, that's a great tool for everyone. I learn. I play fantasy baseball too, so I learn about the prospects before most people even know about them because of <laughs> playing it will be the show. <laughs> I, you know what? I think that's something we need to do. I think we need to get a card artist um, fantasy league. I know there was one with like Blake and a bunch of other guys that were in that, but we'll have to get another one going. Uh, and, yeah, I'm in that one. Oh, that's you're it. in that one. Oh, yeah, how, I'm in that how, one. How, how you do it? I saw that one and I was like, oh, I really want to be in that one. There's no way I qualify for that. <laughs> well, it's rotisserie, which I'm not a huge fan of. Right. Um, I like head to head more because rotisserie you can fall i'm in fifth now but you can fall way behind and then you just lose interest because there's no way to make it up um so hopefully maybe we'll change it next year uh <laughs> head to head is more fun because it's every week and you i change my lineups daily and because of MLB, mlb the show i'm learning about guys and following them you know while they're in class a or <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely I, I, i'm doing the same thing with like a tops bunt and learning the guys from that way the rookies and all that so i, yeah. I totally understand there uh and then i also like the art that comes out you know they come out and you said every week so you kind of go well the art's pretty cool with that there um uh, yeah, that's it's horrible the game at Mel emily's show but i love card collecting and fantasy baseball so it, it kind of brings it all together in one it's hard because i don't have the patience to wait wait for balls to strike so i just want to hit <laughs> yeah, I'm the exact same way. I give yeah, it up because oh man, give me down the middle, man. Give me down the middle. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I get I get frustrated with that as well. I'm like, all right, yeah, just anything close. Let me swing anything close. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I um. There's my Acuna nice. there. Yeah, cool. I like the cool. I, I I um. I absolutely like. Um, I, I play the daily events and kind of go. All right, there. Oh, you got in hand. All right, there we go. Yep. The camera there. Again, I guess my, my latest uh, inspiration is the color. Got to have splashes of color to make it pop. But I think I, I really enjoy, like you say, to make it pop. I think that's where, you, where as you, if you're a Tops or Panini and Donruss, you can only do so much with that because you have to sell your cards there and it might not work for a whole set where well, i think as a card artist you can absolutely go do this for a one-on-one -on -one and go all right and it really works for it i just don't think you could actually do a set of it like that yeah so a lot of times i, I design the one-offs because i used to design for a set but it's it's hard to do the concept and the yeah it's easier to do one-offs i almost like i try to design them almost be like posters so i make t-shirts out of them and I want it to look good in a large format as well. But I wanted to ask you, whatever happened with the card competition? Hi, I, I, I have to do it. I, I'm going to announce it on Monday. It, it, it's still there. Um, okay. Oh my gosh. Like, uh... So I can't show my card yet? 
I've been holding it the whole time. Oh man, if you want to, you can. Like I said, um, I, I'm announcing the winner Monday. It's been a process behind that. <laughs> and I absolutely apologize with that, but yeah, we, we've got the, um, we're gonna announce it Monday uh, before we talked with Josh Trout, who's coming on the show, so. Okay. All right, I'll wait to hold my card. Um, All right, yeah. No, I apologize about that. We we have gotten so far behind on things, um, and uh, yeah, we uh, that is my fault entirely. I, uh, so, but yes, we, we'll announce on Monday. So, but I want I want to plug my uh, eBay store. This one hasn't even gone up yet. This is a wired. Hold on. Uh, Stop Fernando sharing Tati. the screen so you can show it right there. All right. You can oh, there we go. So this is a wired card I did. I got everything up on eBay. They're all $10 a piece. This one I'm going to probably put up tomorrow. Um, it's got the circuitry in the back. So I, this one I tried to make a little set on. It's hard to see the, my old camera, but um, yeah, check out my eBay store. It's in the link in my bio on Instagram. And you can find all the ones I'm doing. I, I just spent most of the day today trying to, re, have to reformat them to get them printed, get them make them a little wider so they don't get cut off and everything. So I spent a lot of the day trying to get some cards ready to print. I have to out, outsource that on the web. My printer sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, it's, it's, so you go to a local printer? Have you found something that's uh, easy to work with for cards? Because I know when we were doing cards last year, people were like, uh, yeah, I really can't do these because the, they thought they were trying to make counterfeit baseball cards. And they're like, no, 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 we're card artists. It's completely different. Uh, it, I'll be honest. I spent a lot of money and tried a lot of different printers. Um, a lot of them had a hard, they have a really hard time centering cards. So it's very right. frustrating. Um, like mytradingcards.com or got print are some of the ones I use. Um, so it's a lot of dealing with customer service. Thank God that this one came out pretty close to darn even. Um, this is from mytradingcards.com that I got printed and I wanted the COA for the back. So it was like my first official legit card. Right. Um, Again, that's why I'm glad my wife made me keep one. Because <laughs> <So> I, <laughs> I can only do 10 for the agreement. So this is 10 of 10 is mine. Um, but yeah, it, it's been a journey just figuring it all out um, and trying to figure out how I can get them printed. How do, it, how do I sell them? I, I, it was such a roadblock for years of, of, you know, can I put them out there on eBay? But there's there's so many people doing their own cards now. It's almost like music. Everybody can produce their own music from home now. Um, with cards, I'm amazed at how many card artists. There's people that are copying stuff. They put out autographs, um, or some people copy the, the actual tops cards. But if you go on eBay, you can. There's a huge audience. Um, so I'm, I just opened my store, you know, maybe last month, I think. And I'm getting a lot more traffic there than I than I do on Etsy. So I'm, I'm trying to find my price points and it I don't print a whole bunch of everyone so it's you know it's trying to find my way you know absolutely I think that's what it is you kind of just go all right well this is how I've been doing it and this is what's working and you, you keep improving on it and, and take it from there so I and you're absolutely like I said everything's kind of blown up in the last year uh and I'm curious to see where things are going to go the following year and see how how crazy things get from here on out yeah I think it's important to be Everyone talks, I've never been an investor. I've collected cards since 1978. So I've always collected because I love the hobby. Mm -hmm. and that's why I kind of said, why can't I do that? Create my own baseball cards. Um, so I've never collected anything to kind of make money off it. I don't really sell other cards on eBay besides my own. Um, I have them up on my wall that you see in my, my, my daily videos for the card artist spotlights. Um, now I'm doing card collector spotlights, um, trying to give, other people some shine. Uh, so yeah, I, I would say after everything blows over, just collect who you love. Cause then you can't be disappointed that way, whether it's worth a thousand or it's worth a dollar. If it's who you like and you like the, the, the artist or the card art or it's tops or penny, whatever, then you're never disappointed. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we, we get, we have that a lot out here with the UK audience where, People like, I want to get into cards, what should I collect? And I said, well, are you doing it as an investor? Or are you doing it because you love it? And, and, and this is kind of the thing, I'm like, okay, well, I said, you know, we, we all have the story of owning, you know, 100 Kevin Moss cards or Ricky Jordan cards. 
<laughs> you know, and we were all going to retire the Sammy Sosa and McGuire cards and, and, you know, they're worth nothing there. So, so look, you know, if it's money, money to spend, I said, spend it on Mike Trout. You're not going to go wrong with that. So otherwise, like everything else is a pure gamble. Right. You don't know what Acuna or Tatis or Otani guys get injured and you, you may have put tons of money into it. But if you, if you like them anyway, it doesn't matter if they're injured. Exactly. Yes. I love no, Tatis so and Acuna, so I collect them whether they're injured or not. Um, <laughs> that's what i tell him i said is, is find find your favorite guy that probably no one cares about on your team and collect that card and you just become <laughs> a super collector of that guy um but i have a great story i usually tell him i said look i i have an 86 fleer what was it canseco card it was probably a, a gem mint 10 <laughs> i dropped it so it's not a gem mint 10 anymore <laughs> but again i paid 50 dollars that because he went 40 for 40 I'm like canseco's gonna be a hall of famer i said yep i said you know i think you can you can Oh, it's worth like five bucks now if, I, if I'm lucky. And I said, you know, so you just never know. So um, a lot of them are, a lot of them are investing in Gleber Toyeras and Tatis. I said, you know, I hope it works out for you. Uh, but otherwise, like if they get hurt and then they, 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 it doesn't work out for them, I said, you've dropped a lot of money on that. So just enjoy the ride. All right. That's why if you collect who you love, it won't matter what they're worth in the end. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping personally, I haven't been able to buy store cards a box of cards in a store for over a year now <laughs> and i have i'm trying to teach my nephews and nieces to collect mm -hmm. i always bring cards to open up when i visit them um but i haven't luckily i have a little stash that i've had over, for the past year but i'm hoping things calm down so i can actually buy a box of cards again in the store and then not pay double triple i just want to pay retail i'm not going to pay triple the price or four times the price for a box of cards no way so if you give them like packs of cards, I'm assuming it's modern. Do you ever give them the, the junk era stuff? Because you know, you can always get junk era. Yeah, I mean, I may have to. It's easier with, with the newer ones because uh, my nephew lives in Tampa, one of them. Mm -hmm. So he's a Rays fan. And obviously there weren't Rays back. <laughs> in this. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, it's easier for guys they know. I do have a cool story if we have time. Yeah, I so said, go ahead. We've got, I mean, uh, we can... Got about 10 more minutes before I need to probably log off and get ready for Jamie. But yeah, absolutely. So thank God I'm before you, Jamie, because your card is awesome today. Um, my card next to yours, I was like, ooh, I'm glad I'm before him. Um, but where my where my nephew lives, he lives five doors down from Kevin Kiermeyer, who plays for the Tampa Bay Rays. He's a mm -hmm. platinum glow glove winner for people that don't know. He just moved in, and last week my nephew found out and they went to his house one night. And his, Mrs. Kiermeyer answered the door and said, oh, you know, Kevin's at the park playing, so you, you need to come back tomorrow. So he and his little friends, they're 9 and 10 years old. They went back the next day and got to meet him, and he showed him some of his gold gloves. And I said, uh, my nephew, I said, this doesn't happen for everybody. But you live five doors down from a platinum gold, gold glove winner that pays for the Tampa Bay race. So cherish this because it, most of us didn't grow up with like that <laughs> exactly yeah yeah because i'm sure there'll be days where he'll go out and probably throw the ball for him and they said you know what and, and you know, just yeah. have a little fun with, play with that play with his kids in the backyard or whatever so exactly yeah it, it does i want to make sure happen. he knows this this isn't the not every kid has this opportunity um but it's such a cool i felt like i had goosebumps the whole day i'm like my mom texted me you're gonna meet he's gonna meet kevin i'm like kevin who <laughs> yeah Who's it? Who's Kevin? There's, there's a lot of Kevins. <laughs> yeah, I said, you mean Kiermaier on the on the baseball player? Yeah, the baseball player. I'm like, oh my god, this is. I was a 50 year old kid that the whole day waiting for him to meet Kevin Kiermaier. Oh, that's so anyway, really cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. if you love the sport, whether it's cards or MLB the show or or hopefully you, you'll follow this the JG20 MVP movement. If you're like me, I've been watching the All-Star Game, and I voted every year for the All-Star Game my whole life. Uh, from punching out the, the ballots back in the day, <laughs> yeah. I vote at least once online now. Um, but hopefully you'll, you'll support the campaign. Go to uh, NLB Mart, <laughs> on the artists, follow them on Twitter. Buy your, you can buy your shirt, sign the petition. That's, it's bigger than baseball, what we're trying to do here, and bigger than us uh for our for us as artists our name's getting you know noticed maybe a little more but hopefully at the end of all this his name gets on the trophy that's what we're trying to do 
Absolutely. That's that's the goal number one there. Like I said, whatever we're doing here to raise profile, uh, it's, a, it's a bonus where we get from it. You know, we're not doing it because we're trying to get anything out of it. We're doing it because we're trying to you know raise the attention for it. Exactly. Exactly. Cool. All right. Well, let's listen. Where can people find your stuff? Uh, go to at Garcia Studios on Instagram. It's easier there. Then go to the link in my bio for eBay or you can go to eBay, look up Garcia Studios, I guess, and try to find it that way, too. Um, but I do have a bunch for sale. Everything's 10 bucks. Uh, I accept best offers and I got free shipping. So can't lose. Can't lose. All right, David, thanks for coming on the show. We'll announce the winners on Monday for you. Don't worry. It says all there. We, 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 <laughs> had, to, we had to take a week off and, and, and kind of catch up there and we had everything set up, but we'll, we didn't do it. So, um, but uh, I'm going to go and catch the end of the Scotland England game real quick. <laughs> me too. Me too. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and thanks for everyone that tuned in to watch there. So yeah, just stick around yeah. for a second, David. We'll close off Facebook real quick. So, okay. all right, all right, guys. I'll Thanks, be back everybody. at five o'clock or ten o'clock, and uh, I'll have Jamie Thomas on the show. So, all right, let's see. We'll close this on Facebook. Sorry, my screen.